Hello, welcome to Kate Saying. Today I am driving my dad's new combine again. He had to run to town and get some parts. Unloading, and then I 
don't really check my speed at all. I like to set a speed where I know the combine can handle the upcoming swath, so I'll go a little bit slower dumping on the go. Then I shut the grain off with the button. I let the rest kind of fall out, and then I put my auger back, which is the signal for our grain cart driver to leave. And then also while dumping on the go, I'll occasionally glance down at my header, make sure the height and everything is okay. This is a really flat field, so it's pretty simple here. It gets a little bit challenging when you're on hills and things like that, which you generally don't want to dump on anyway. Because we're coming up to the end of this part of the field, there's a lot of shorter rows, and since I'm the first combine, I'm going to take the first row, which is usually the longest, and then Jim will start at a staggered place because the next row is a lot further inside. So that's why he said on the radio that he would stop to dump. And his row doesn't go quite as long either, so he just waits for a little bit for me to get 100 yards ahead, and then he'll start his row. I'm just waving at Jim. It's always so fun to wave at the other combine drivers and even people on the road outside of the field. I think it makes everybody's day just a little brighter. Jim's next row starts right here, so he's just waiting for me to get 100 yards in front of his next row and then he'll start. It's after lunch, I'm dumping in the grain cart right now. I don't have very much grain in my tank. I have to make the first pass all the way around the field. So that's what I'm doing next. I was just on that side of the coolie and now I'm on this side. If I would like to unload in the grain cart, I'll have to back up out of my row, which I will have to do probably somewhere up here. I'm doing the first pass in this new part of the field. So you can see it's the one right by all the coolies. It has a lot of different turns and dips in it. It's always the hardest one is the first pass and then these ones will be a lot easier. And then our grain cart driver's over there. But I think we're going to have to unload before we get over there. Oh wait, I think it actually doesn't go straight down. It wraps all the way around. So we're going to do this in two sections, I bet. Maybe this one first and then this one. There is a hawk on every single post up here. Oh my goodness, how cool is that? All the way up there. Wow, that's cool. They're starting to fly away now. You can even see them up there. Every single post. Yeah, it's really cool. That's what I was just looking at, and they're on every single post. Yeah, I've never seen that before. And as I get closer, they fly away. Oh my goodness. Still one there. Whoa, look at them. They are so cute. So many of them. at least 30, 40 hawks. It was really, really cool. I'm driving by somebody else's crop right now. I'm taking the first row on, around this whole field, as I was saying, and our grain cart driver's parked up here, so I'll probably unload over there. Possibly picked up those wheat swaths, that field, I won't have to pull out of my row to unload. He'll just drive on a straw row. Now we have the straw choppers on in this field. We don't want to have to bail this field. So we've got the choppers on and it's just chopping up the straw pieces and spreading it throughout the back rather than leaving straw rows that would need to be bailed or if they're not bailed, they have to be burned. The wheat swaths are a little bit better and a little bigger here. They're probably running 30 bushel per acre. 25 bushel maybe. I'm going to unload headed south and that'll make it easier on everyone. Making my turn to start my next row. We've got a neighbor disking in the field over to us. I'm not sure where our grain cart driver is. I'm just checking because I know I'm going to have to unload soon. I'm putting out my auger to signify that I'd like to dump right now. Yeah, that was about to go bad really quickly. He was super close and I'm on the edge of my header to try and not go over the grain cart. But it all ended well, so that's what counts. You always have a couple of dumps like that where it's a little bit, you don't know what's gonna happen, kind of. So I'm happy it all went well and 
there is no hard-earned grain on the ground. Our grain cart driver just radioed and said there's a fire to the east. It's that right there. To my east. Now it's actually pretty close. We've had a lot of fires recently just because of how dry it is. There was just a bird in a whirlwind over here. That was crazy. Oh my gosh. Jim just radioed to me and I didn't even notice it. Wow. Just started this part of the field right now. I am about to drive by Darcy's semi truck. The other semi truck is going in town because it had a broken axle on the trailer so it was getting fixed and we had rented a trailer for it and I think we're returning it now. Here's Darcy. After you finish dumping we're going to be roading to the schoolhouse. Okay. So I just let Jim know the plan. We just finished this field so we are going to road to the schoolhouse next and my dad's going to meet us there, and then we'll take the combines to the next field. Are going to the schoolhouse now, so I'm taking this back road headed west, and then I'll go south and then west again. It looks like Jim's right behind me, and then our grain cart should follow, and also the truck. We're just on a dirt road right now, so I have to be careful. I'm setting the pace for everyone else, so I have to be really careful what is making my header bounce what is going to hurt the equipment behind me, and what would be a safe speed to go. We've just started west on that dirt road now. Now this is a kind of back road gravel road, so not a main gravel road, so we want to be a little bit careful. It's not too wide. Put our emergency flashers on because we're moving fields. We'll just wait here for Brad. I didn't notice Brad wasn't behind us. He's still dumping, so he'll be here soon. I don't see my dad driving the other combine yet. I do see some combines in fields, though. That's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, my sunglasses fell down. You have to make sure to look both ways very well in the combine because there's not only my combine, but another combine and a grain cart that has to come. Then we speed up again. I didn't really notice a difference with the duels on with the duels roading, but I just realized I have them, so that's kind of cool. Oh, I see my dad on the combine. He is headed to the schoolhouse too. We'll arrive close to the same time. He's a little bit closer. And he can drive 20 miles an hour on the highway. I can't quite go that fast on the gravel. I'm going around 17.9. I keep checking my mirror because I want to make sure Jim and our grain cart are still behind. See, we can't, we can't move these off the road. That pickup's going to have to go somewhere. Which, yeah, they just pulled off the road. Be careful up here. There's a pickup. So we want to be really careful, slow down, and not scare them at all or scare ourselves. We are in big pieces of machinery. They tried to pull off because there's no way. I mean, there's really steep ditches here. We're not getting the equipment back out if we go down this. And I made it by smoothly. I kind of drove on the edge, but I want to slow down and just make sure everyone else gets by. Okay, looks like our green cart driver is making it through as well. Just want to make sure it's all good before I take off and leave someone hitting the pickup. All right, now I'm speeding back up to 17. Point six, and we're going to continue our road trip to the schoolhouse. Well, I guess it's not a road trip, it's more of a combine trip on the back roads of Montana. My Uncle Chris just asked if they filled the white tandem and they didn't, so I let him know that they didn't. I'm going 18 miles an hour now. Now the hard part is remembering to turn the hazards off, so we'll see if I am able to do that. Looks like the whole lentil field was picked up. Well, this is only one of our lentil fields. We have a thousand acres in lentils this year. So my dad's over there with the other combine. This is really, really exciting because we will be able to finish harvest in a timely manner. And we're also supposed to get a lot of rain this weekend. Oh my gosh, a pheasant. Aww. <laughs> Aww. That is so adorable. As I was saying, we're supposed to get a lot of rain this weekend, so we want to get as much of our harvest completed before that rain because we don't know how long it will stop us for after. Even if it stops raining, we can't pick up wet wheat, so we have to make sure it dries out and it takes hot weather to do that. But rain is good for the ground for seeding. 
All right, my dad just started his combine up and we're headed to our new field, so we won't be stopping here. I'm now second combine in our pack of now three combines for the first time yet this year. Just super crazy to be saying that because usually we start the year off with three combines and this year was really one combine for most of the year. I'm waving at my grandpa. He's helping us flag today. Make sure no traffic on the highway and head on out. Now, full throttle and 22 miles an hour down the road. My dad will be able to see if there's anyone in front of us and my grandpa's going to go behind us to make sure that there's no one back there. And our grain cart driver is just hitting the highway now. So we're all together. We made it. Past all of the little obstacles it takes when roading your combine. I guess my max is not 22 miles an hour, it's only 20.9. When you're going a tenth of a mile an hour slower, it really feels like a lot. So if you've got the front combine not maxing out their speed and going maybe 18 or 19 and you want to go 20, it really feels like a lifetime of difference. Combines are not known for their speed, that is one thing. I'm going downhill at 21.5 miles an hour. So if you're looking for a big machine with a lot of speed, I would not recommend a combine. But if you're looking for a machine that will harvest grain in the field, then I would recommend a combine. I don't think we'll be switching combines, we might be, but since we're all just in the combine, we're in probably how we'll run this field, and this combine just got fixed, so I bet my dad wants to make sure it's all working properly, so if something goes wrong, his experience will be able to notice the problem a lot sooner than with Jim's or my experience. For example, Jed, the greatest John Deere mechanic ever, he said, it is all to do with the operator that that combine is not in way worse condition from the breakdown we had. My dad. My dad smelled burning oil and he stopped the combine and he was able to figure it out, whereas a lot of other operators would have kept going. It's, oh! That was a bump in the road. Oh, we have a semi-truck. We're going to have to pull off here. So I'm pulling as far off as I can. And we're back on the road. With our 30-foot straight cutting headers, the little road reflectors, we have to weave them through, and also the stop signs and everything like that. So if you ever see a sign that's completely bent on a back road in the country, kind of by where farming fields are, it's usually because the equipment hits them and knocks them over. I've never personally done that, but I have seen people do that. I can never tell if I'm pressing this button fully in, and if everyone can hear me, it's hard with this radio. Turning off the road right now to follow my dad up to our next field, which I'm pretty sure is the big hill. The big hill we harvested my first year, but I haven't been there since because we had it in summer follow. Whoa! Wow, I hit a bump there. You really got to be ready with your hand on this hydrostat here because you really got to slow down if you see your header come way up like this. That's never ever a good thing. Oh my goodness, a baby pheasant. Oh, it is so cute. Oh my goodness. Two baby pheasants just crossed the road. Oh, they are so cute. Got a bunch lined about. This is a guy that planted like 300 of them came, so he's actually got a few pheasants. There was a bunch of here too. Our neighbor here around- hey, you got a coffee? around 300 yeah, I do. pheasants on his oh, land that big now. and kind of repopulated the pole, area because yeah, I do. I'll come down and move it or you can move it. I'll come down and move it. Okay. Because too many people were hunting them which is really really sad and I hope that a lot more people stop hunting the pheasants because they're really becoming not too common in this area and they used to be all over probably should not be in third gear in the field, but I can't help myself. So I'm stopping my combine, put it back in second gear, idle it down, turn the back of the machine on, the thrashing part, the header, and when people say thrashing, they mean the part that separates the wheat and kind of goes like this to separate the kernels from the chaff and coverings of them. This is just straw in the second row, right? Right. Yeah, I was going to say, there is no way that that's wheat, but the wheat here is not great anyway. 
drop my header to the ground. My combine has a ball, so it makes it a little bit easier. The wheat looks a little bit better here than it was in the last field, so that's good. Oh, I need to turn my hazards off. I always forget. At least I remembered the first row this time. Last time it took me like three rows to remember. Ooh, we've got a coolie coming up here. Wow, this is a big coolie. It will be interesting. It's not too bad. I mean, it's definitely doable. If you're a brand new combine driver, I think you would have problems here. Um, I don't know. I don't even think my, I wasn't totally brand new my first year of harvesting. I actually did a little bit of combining by myself when I was 12, but it was my first full year having a combine dedicated to me that I ran every single day from around 8.30 to 9.30, 10. This coolie is not as bad as I thought it was. Just slow down a little bit. The wheat's always thicker through here. So I'm going to pull this round by the coolie and we're going to do this in sections. Oh wow, that's cool seeing the other combines like that. I'll have to show you. This is the correct way to do this, right dad? Right. That's what I thought. Those are the other two combines right there. It's kind of fun to be the first combine. You get to choose where to go. Brad, if I were you, I'd probably turn around and go to the corner between you and hang out. I think we can make this around. I have not quite a quarter tank of grain. I don't know. I feel like it has a little more chaff in it than it should. But the only way you can change that is close the sieves, go slower, which I think the sieves are already pretty far closed right now. See, this says it's doing 20 bushels an acre, and this meter I found is about half off, so it's probably doing 40 here. And I would say an average crop is around 40 or 50 bushels, so we're not hurting too bad, although this could have been a 70 bushel crop, which would have been a good one. It's 7.40 p.m. and I'm starting to get a bit tired. We don't have too long left, around an hour and a half, two hours. We might go later tonight, I'm not sure. You can go around and then sit at the southeast corner. And then, you know, we'll try and find a place we can dump, but we'll probably just have to stop on this field because it's a short journey. Oh, thank God, okay. That is hilarious. down just a little bit I kind of feel the rotor stumbling with my feet and I hear it a little bit so that's an indication that combine is processing too much weed at once you really have to listen a lot when you're driving combine just to make sure everything's going properly within the machine usually if you have something going wrong you're going to hear it or smell it so I've always got my ears listening for things that could potentially not be right or could stop our operation Jim's in that combine my dad's in the other one. The ball, I'm just realizing, is pretty useful. My dad said he got a John Deere ball for this one, so if I do end up, end up driving this more frequently, I'll have a ball. Our Kinsey grain cart says it holds 840 bushels, but it can hold 1,000 if you really fill it up. We finished this part of the field where the coolie is, and now we're all going to unload in the grain cart and head to the next part of the field, which is over there. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. It's around 8.40 p.m. and we're not going to start the new part of the field. My dad decided we'll just go home tonight. So we all parked our combines right here. My grandpa is going to give dad and I a ride back to our cars in the other field so that we can get home tonight. Well, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe to learn more about how your food gets to your table. And follow Kate's Egg on Instagram, K-A-T-E-S underscore A-G, and on Facebook, Pinterest, TikTok, pretty much everywhere else. And to purchase a Kate's Egg tote bag, you can go to katesegg.com, K-A-T-E-S-A-G.com. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!